Hello, this is Dave Herman on uh, May 10th, 2018 at uh, 7.08 in the evening, if you're looking down here. And I'm going to draw or start, actually, an illustration I hope to start of a electron microscope uh, magnification of a fly. So I've drawn a 9 by 12 uh, background at 200 line screen. <sighs> Pardon me for the yawn. And now I'm going to uh, add some gray and make it like a table uh, at the bottom. So let's let's pick some gray. Pick the gray. Pick the gray. There we go. And come across like this, just slightly. And then brighter down here as it's closer to us. And fade back a little. I'm going to go bigger. Fade back, coming across like that into the background. Kind of a vignette. There we go. And then I'm going to go a little brighter towards the viewer. And a little brighter still. And that's how I make that vignette, okay? And then I'm going to put the fly on here. So I uh, should have done that on layer one. So what I'm going to do is put layer four down here, and I'm going to call it my, my background. <sighs> oh, boy. Yeah, so background. As we know, I make lots of mistakes when I work. It's part of being me as the artist, but I do the best I can. See, I should have had that background copy. But that's okay, because uh, it's not a worry. I'll go to the next level. This is where I'm going to start to fly. So my fly, is, I'm going to kind of draw this out uh, in a black. Let's see, I'm going to a line that will show up. So I'm going to do a white, because I can kill that layer. And I'm going to plan out the creature here, my fly. So when I look at my reference material, uh, this is being the center, just kind of rough. And the height will be not quite halfway up, so a little bit low for lower than that. And the wing will be on kind of a 60 degree angle. So it's hard to do that when you're drawing on tablets, but uh, something like that. And then I start to build it like you would build um, a cootie catcher, a cootie, you know, in the game cootie. So using my eye, I just kind of visually see how this falls. So this kind of the torso chunk will be right in here. And when I say electron microscope, it's going to be that kind of a gray uh, it's going to be monotone grays. So then there's kind of a, uh, like a neck shield, and then the neck itself that connects to the head of this uh, fly. Actually, it, it's a uh, flying ant, I would think, with wings. Yeah, because it's got an antenna. So I just picked an insect off the uh, internet. I'm not sure what the heck this is. It's going to be pretty cool. It, it's a fly with antennas. May very well be a hornet, but uh, I don't know. We'll look at it. Doesn't really say what I'm using on the reference here. It just has an electron microscope. Hmm. Okay. So the head, kind of here, and there's a eye, of course, is big right in this area. And then this is kind of a strange development on the head. And then this comes down like this. Uh, you know, it's like a hornet or an ant or a flying ant or something. I don't know. It's kind of mandible like an ant. I'm not sure. But anyways, having fun. We get this roughed in. So this is going to be the head area. This will be the neck area. 
This will be the torso or thorax area. Uh, wow, there's a lot of armor and stuff. One, two, three. One, two, three. Six legs. So it's not a spider. It's an ant with wings. I don't, I'm not sure what this is. Okay. Because under the electron microscope, they really look weird. <laughs> Whatever. This is a hornet or a bee. It's like a hornet. Yeah, long, long antenna, so I'm not sure. But then there's the body, uh, the second part of the torso there, the, the lower part of the abdomen, which is kind of elongated, say like that. So kind of like an x-ray now. Then there's two antenna that come out this way. And they're very long. And that's just to remind me one's behind the other. Okay. And then there's legs. And these are very intriguing things. Uh, so I'm just roughing in the position for me to articulate later. Uh, You know, I take on these challenges only to develop my art skills. There's no other reason to subject myself <laughs> to these kind of challenges. But uh, I, I, I want to get better. That's it. I just constantly want to improve. And I want to be able to say I can draw anything on the planet Earth and do it digitally. And since I used to be a uh, traditional artist, <laughs> And wow, there's so much stuff in an electron microscope when you magnify it that it's just plain spookyish. Whoosh! So, alignment wise, yeah, this one's up here, kind of comes down here with some armor and a foreshortening to this one, to this one, to all these little sections to the TARS feet. Uh, and then there's a big one back here. Yeah. Like that. And then that comes down. There's kind of like an articulated joint. Then your next segment. So you got segment, joint, segment. Very interesting. You got another little like segment, but it's attached to the next, you know, a, a joint that's a pivot, but it's connected to this. So. In the long run, if I live long enough, I want to be able to draw like a genius. I want to be able to study all of this, get into a 3D program eventually, and get into robotics, all self-taught. And I'm not in any hurry because I figure I'm immortal. And I will just live forever. That's how it works. Because if you have something to do, and I do. I've committed myself to this. Oh, it's double wings. So I'm guessing this might even be, wow, like a dragonfly of some type. That's what it is. Oh, not there. So this is this is the tricky part. Drawing on these weird angles flat. Um, can't quite get, you know, the pencil to do what you want it to do. Which is why I do want to draw on a screen eventually, but um, it's all right. By the time I learn all this stuff, it won't matter to me anymore. So right now I draw on the uh, Wacom Intuos Pro tablet slate, and that's on my desktop. And I mean, it's just sitting on the desk, and then I draw. Um, while I look at my monitor above my laptop. The laptop sits on the table. In front of that is my Intuos Pro Medium. Then above the laptop is the monitor with my reference always. 
and that's kind of how I work, you know. Um, I should save the reference because I'll kibosh it. So let me save what we got here. Save as uh, electron microscope microscope insect illustration. Ta-da! And I'll save that to the desktop. And then I'll save this as a JPEG so I can uh, record my steps. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going to save the one master PSD. I used to number them all different and everything. I'm saving the one master PSD and then a JPEG of each step. And the reason I do that is to have frames to show the progression. Now if I lose the PSD, it's no big deal because I can take any illustration and copy the background layer and uh, put layers above it or whatever, starting right from a JPEG, turn it back into a, uh, a PSD. So I'm never quite worried about that. And uh, hang on one second, I gotta send off a text here. And that's that. Sent it off. And we're back at the illustration. Okay. So, where do we start now that I've got this? And you know what? I, I love this illustration, just kind of the way it is there. But you see, I have a number of things that I incorporate into my uh, illustrations. I don't want to reveal them all because uh, it, it's a methodology, and so hopefully I would teach one day if I get good enough. Be a nice way to retire, uh, teach people art, and, um, you know, having gone the distance from before they even invented tablets till now, because I'm almost 68, I'll be 68 in June. <laughs> uh, going from printing profession to advertising to tattoo artists for 20 years to digital artists. A uh, lot of steps, a lot of steps, a lot of history, and a lot of understanding of what I'm doing, sometimes not. So I'm going to start with the head. Okay. So we're going to go to another layer. So this layer is going to be called line work. And I'm going to do that as a uh, white line work shell. I like to change the names all the time. my own ghost in the shell. And then I will do my begin of illustration. Oops, what's happening here? Uh, layer properties, begin of illustration. Okay. And then fit on screen. Uh, you can see people are trying to contact me, which is always a good thing sometimes. All right. And let's see what we got there. And you just make a check. Uh, nothing too important there. Okay. So now, let's work on the head. Uh, and you also get to see how I manage my, my business and my life while I'm trying to draw. So first things first. Uh, I don't really use a palette. I use the swatches. And then if I need a color identical to what's in my illustration, I just use the pen, you know, the eyedropper, I mean, to copy a color. So say here, we are going to fill this, for instance. And let's see what's going on here. 
Got this color picked. And we need to pick the brush. That would always help. You know, I don't know what I'm in right now. <laughs> oh, I'm in something down here. Okay. So, where'd the brush go? That was supposed to be brush, right? No, that's a dodge tool by accident. Must have hit that somewhere. Don't know how I did that. Pen, brush, boom, back to the game. Okay. And for those of you watching at home at my bungling, please bear with me. And see, business won't stop, so sometimes I have to deal with that. It's the 7 o'clock hour here, see, so people are eating their dinner and just fired off emails to me and stuff, you know. Because it's their time to sit around and catch up in the day, which is cool. All right. Now, back to this. And for those of you that put up with me, uh, you will learn stuff. That's a promise. All right, now, let's shape this around the eye. So the eye is not quite, it's an ellipse, but it has a flattened edge right here. Let me go darker, by the way. And right like so. Then it's got a little bump at the top, and then kind of goes ellipsoid on a slight angle about five degrees from 12 o'clock so okay so you gotta think like that one of the ways I, it helps me to remember the angles is I just think of the hands of a clock you know and mentally I make a note of that and then I kind of position things according to the hands of a clock or something like that you know you can do whatever you want but this is bringing the eye into this and until I'm happy with the shape, which I will play around back and forth a little bit here, fleshing it out more, uh, say like so, and getting a lead edge and kind of rounding. This needs to be rounded a little better. You, know, you can't do this stuff fast. I, you know, the stuff you see time elapsed on the Internet, good for those guys. Most stuff I see, they grab images off the Internet, especially the flat the matte painters because I guess times of the essence of course and then they just cobble it all together and uh, do something there's some really good matte painters that start from scratch and those are the guys like myself that were old school painters that um, in the days of airbrush and things like that and worked in advertising which I did and uh, now we're trying to bring our skills into this game. And for us it, as self-taught guys, it takes a long time because we're trying to do something that we don't understand we're trying to do, which is locate the tools to do things the way we did traditionally in the real world. In other words, if I wanted a pencil or I want a scraper or I want a brush, I find that and then I learn how to set the 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 all the parameters to make it do what I did in the real world and then I do that digitally you know what I mean okay so now this is roughly the eye it's not articulated with little holes and dots and stuff yet it has some shading so we'll throw in some real-time shading here we're going to uh, flush it out a little bit more make it a little bigger I mean, uh, towards the viewer. So I'll put a little tone in here. And then um, I want some subtle stuff. So I take down the flow, keep my darkness there. I want to come around this edge, press in a little bit like that. I want to come down lower over that. And I want to fill this in a little bit. So I even go big sometimes because you're just using the center of your brush. And I'll do something like that. Now this is just kind of ghosted in, right? Then I can come back 
and again just pedal over it you know just wispy over it is that there's something I want here that I'm not seeing and that's there we go so that for me is the basis and then I go into another shape so I'm going to uh, there's this thing on the back of the head which is really cool here so uh, these shapes all right, let's, let's go around the eyeball. Come around and shape my eye a little bit more. It's just a little too big. About like that. There we go. And round that out. And then come back up. It's got that flat plane here that's about 5 degrees. Comes up to a little mound up here and then starts an ellipse okay like that and that's kind of the reminder of what I'm doing then and this is still too wide so I'm gonna narrow that down a little bit and this is freehand so these things take time you know don't be rushed so this is actually going into that plate of armor in the back of the head up here. Very mysterious stuff. This is where you can appreciate a certain magic in nature. Nature does not make something that it does not use. So I don't know how to say that any better than everything has a purpose. If you see something well, we don't know what it is just yet. It is there because it belongs there. And um, what shapes a creature, uh, these should have been lower out here. So uh, let's erase that, these antenna bars. They don't belong up here. That was my miss. Uh, not very good seeing that. Okay. And we'll be on background also. Get that out of there. And then I'm going to go back to there. Okay. They were down low, see, and I was not observant while I was talking. They're almost. They're not quite out of the center. They're exactly at the divine proportion. So we just know that that goes there. So what do I mean by the divine proportion? Uh, the golden rectangle. So the distance from here, top of this head, to the bottom of this head, is a length. And in the exact point, to divide the golden ratio, or 1.618, is where this antenna starts when you look at the illustration. So, uh, for those of you who don't know what the golden rectangle is, please look up golden rectangle, Fibonacci numbers, and 1.618, so you may understand the complete. Uh, Nature is built on the golden rectangle. All the high primitive civilizations that we call them primitive, the high ancient civilizations, like Egyptian, like Mayan, like Anunnaki, like Kamishan, they all knew the 1.618 ratio, which is called the phi ratio, P-H-I instead of pi ratio, which is PI for 3.1417 uh, forever continuing decimal that never repeats, which is the uh, needed to make circles. Okay. The pi and the phi, two different ratios. Okay. So now we're starting to build this head and uh, Thinking it out, fleshing it out, it's 
tricky stuff. Okay, so now this comes to the front. So a lighter color. So we start to build this, and I'll be pushing back, coming forward, pushing back, going forward, adding hairs. It's a lot of stuff to do. It will take hours and hours and hours. Uh, in five more minutes, I will cut this video. But this is the beginning of the way I start and manage everything else going on. So you kind of see that in the real world, instead of a time lapse, I'm showing you how I manage life as a person. <laughs> now, I may not be the best manager of life, but uh, just so people don't have that sense of anxiety that's not necessary, just go with the flow. Right? So your phone rings. So you go, okay, I'll just look at it. And then I'm done. It doesn't have to ruin your mojo. It doesn't have to take away from the beauty of your day. It doesn't have to kill now that you've got your coffee just right and you've nestled in the draw. Because believe me, when I get my coffee just right and I'm ready to draw, the last thing I want is someone bugging me. That's selfishness on my part, but hey, they're not going to draw for me. i got to get stuff done, and that's how I do it. And now you're just watching me uh, draw a little bit as I start to think this out. Kind of x-ray style. Again, we're looking at an electron microscope, and so it goes from there. Now, I don't know just how well it will eventually turn out. But I'm going to give it my best. The reason is I am teaching myself how to mimic anything, first of all. But to understand the thing. He who understands the thing understands the thing. So that's what I say. <laughs> Have a sense of humor. It will get you very far. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's, you know, i got to save that. So, save as. You see I have a PSD. I don't need to save that again. I just need to save the frames. If I want to show somebody the steps. So I have to number those frames, right? So that was the first frame, the original frame. Now I can go to 001. and then continue. I have two frames I've made and I have my original uh, PSD. So there you go. So let's, uh, it's premature to really work something up. So I'm going to skip that, but I'm studying this. And thanks for tuning in. That is how I start freehand style. <laughs>